Hi, and welcome to the latest in my series of introductions to InfoPath 2007. In this demo, I'm going to go into data connections in a little bit more detail. There are really two sorts of data connections. There are connections that pull data into an InfoPath form from an outside source. And there are connections that send data out. It is possible to set up connections that do both. The submit options I talked about in part three of this series are one type of data connection. Another common option is to link a form to a database or a web service. The web service can include other Microsoft products such as Dynamics Nav, or it could be an interface with a non-Microsoft product, or it could be a partner service provided over the internet. It doesn't matter so long as you have the address for the service. In this demo, I will create a form that links to a database. But the same principles can be applied when creating connections to web services. InfoPath has several wizards allowing you to easily create forms for specific purposes. As you can see, web services and databases are two of the options. I'll double click on database. Now I need to choose the database. I can select a database either on this computer or on a central server. If you wish to create a connection to a database other than SQL or Access, you will need to set it up as a web service. For the sake of this demo, I will choose an Access database that's on this computer. The next page of the wizard is for naming the connections. You will notice that there are two name fields. This is because InfoPath needs a name for the connection which receives information and the one which submits information. If I only wanted this form to read information from the database, I could just uncheck this box here. For now, I will leave it checked and continue. That was all that was needed to create a data connection to a database. And now I have a layout provided by InfoPath. This is the default layout for a database form that I can alter by adding tables, text, images, controls, and so on, as I could with a blank template. In general, there are three ways a database form will be used. You might want a form that you can use to retrieve data from a database. For example, if I were linking to a database of sales records, I might want to enter the customer name, run a query, and see all the details of the sale in question. Alternatively, you might want to create new records. In this example, the form could be an order form. The customer would fill out details of what they want to buy, submit the form, and the information would go directly into the database to be processed. The third way to use the form would be to update existing records. For example, if the customer mistyped the delivery address and wanted to change it. We already have the main structure of the form, but we need the fields for the user to enter information. In this menu on the right, I have a list of fields from my database, split into fields I can query, and those which contain data. If I expand the folders, I will see the fields in my database table. I will choose one to be the field which is queried. It would be possible to have more than one field in this query section, but I'll keep things simple. Similarly, I'll want to include the fields which display information from the database. I am offered several options. I will choose repeating table. This means that the results which are returned may be displayed in multiple rows. So if I run a query that brings back two or more possibilities, I will see them all in my form. I want to make it easier to submit information to my database, so I'll include a submit button. If I didn't do this, users would still be able to submit the form using the option in the menu. And I have my form. It really is that quick. Now I'll save it. Just to prove it all works, I'll fill out this form. So, here I have the form you just saw me build. I can run a query on the uh, data in my database. And you see some results. Run another one. And a single result. I'm pulling into this form all those records that have horse in their animal field. As I mentioned, I can use this form to add new records to my database.
So I've just sent some data into my database. If I query this value again, I should see two records. There you see. If I want, I can make alterations to one of these records and update the database. So there you see a form that will retrieve information, create records and update records created in a matter of minutes with no need for any in-depth knowledge of databases. InfoPath really is that easy to use.